While many crypto investors run for the hills, the reality is that Bitcoin has just put in a picture-perfect retest of a very bullish support line. And as long as it stays above this critical level, we should see bulls remain in control for now. Again, the reality is that this is a very middle ground, no man's land zone for the bull run. And quite frankly, the market could go either way. Anything could happen, but the data that we're looking at right now is very bullish, I believe, and should paint the picture for some bullish reaccumulation before we try higher. If you guys are excited to hear about the data I'm looking at and why I remain optimistic about this market, despite the fact that it is quite a risky territory that we're in, then go ahead, smash that like button. Remember each and every comment on this video is entered to win your own hardware wallet. There are scammers in the comments pretending to be me, don't fall for it. And with that said, let's dive in. First, let's turn to this tweet by Rex Capital saying, picture perfect retest of 38.2 on the dip. This successful retest attempt is setting BTC up for a new sustainable uptrend. Now, when assets bust through price levels, them coming back and bouncing off of those price levels as support is very bullish. In this case, flipping this resistance level that we were under into support, as you can see here, around this 38.2 level. This is what wrecked Capital here, a crypto Twitter technical analyst, pretty well known one here with 160K followers is saying that this is a bullish way to view the price action. As you can see, simplified here on the weekly chart, you can see that this line of 38.2 was significant as it was the top of this green candle, the top of this red candle. And again, you could see it plays here onto this candle here in February and the bottom of this wick. And then we pretty much are floating above it until we come down and retest it again. But you can see there's a lot of interactions here with this price level and for that reason, it tends to hold some significance. Again, guys, TA isn't my forte, but you don't need to be a doctor here to look at this and see that, hey, look, we're bouncing off of this clear support line. More importantly, above the 37K level, a few of my TA buddies have been telling me that they view this as bullish control zone. Scooting over to Dan Moorhead, who's the head of Pantera Capital, one of the best known investors in the entire crypto space. He's saying for new investors, it's best to buy when the market is below trend. Now is one of those times. Bitcoin has only been this quote cheap relative to its trend 20.3% of the past 11 years. So they're saying here that the 11 year trend line here um, demarcated on this chart as 0%. Well, Bitcoin has only been below it for about 20% of the time and you can see during a significant portion here of uh, 2011 and then 2013 and 14, you see here that you know Bitcoin is just wildly above the trend and it only gets below this mean reversion here back in the depths of the bear market from 15 uh, to the beginning of 2017. And you could see that it was there from 2019 all the way to 2021. And it's now reverted back under to negative 36%, which is a pretty low and deep, I guess, yellow in this case reading for this chart. So if you're looking for ways Ways to view the current price action as fundamentally a good bargain. Well, this is one of those charts. Now, does this mean for any reason that this can't go lower? Of course it can go lower. Anything can go lower. And people are looking at, you know, 20K um, or the mid to low 20s as sort of like worst case scenario for crypto. So you're looking at like a 50% drawdown as most likely from what I'm hearing, the backstop for support here for Bitcoin. Now that said, beginning to dollar cost average, when things are below the mean, well, people who typically buy when everyone is scared of Bitcoin, when things are really bad looking, when things are very sour in the community, those people who buy and buy and buy during those periods tend to do exceptionally over time. Now, DCAing isn't the sexiest strategy and people tend to turn their nose up at it. But again, look at the data. When the chart looks like this in 2012, all the way up to 2013, in 2016 to 2017, in 2019 to 2021. I mean, these were all pretty epic Bitcoin buys. And as you can see, uh, the recent price action we had up to 63K in no way matches, in no way matches the exaggerated exponential mountains that were created by the 2013 and the 2017 bull run. So you can see here that this particular chart paints a trend that shows not only is this potentially some fantastic buying territory, but that 
this bull run does not match and does not correlate to the previous bull runs in the size, in the magnitude, in the deviation from the 11-year trend mean 0% line here. So as you can see, this is yet another way for you to view the charts, view the data. Instead of just seeing price going up, you can see a lot more ways to view this data and sort of pull it apart and get a sense of whether or not we really went that parabolic. Again, like I've been saying, it didn't feel complete to me and charts like this seem to keep poking at my underlying suspicion that there is more left in the tank for this bull run. Again, we need to urge caution in these areas and I'm not saying to do anything drastic. Again, you need to make your own decisions and own them. Just like anyone who wants to have dramatic gains in a new world of financial freedom, you need to take financial responsibility. These are just my strategies and how I'm viewing the market. But averaging into Bitcoin in times where this line has been under this 0% marker has been historically very, very good times to buy Bitcoin. We also got news, big macro fundamental news here that old Jay Powell over at the Fed is seeing two rate hikes by the end of 2023 and inching towards a taper. That means that these wildly inflated inflation numbers are just finally starting to get through the heads of the Fed, that the economy is overheating and well, things could start to spin out of control. Again, this in theory is not very good for Bitcoin, but this could bring a little bit more confidence to the whole situation that maybe monetary policy isn't completely spinning out of control. Regardless, I don't think this is going to completely erase and wash away the insane and inordinate amount of money printing that's been going on with the US dollar. However, this is an interesting change of pace, a change of tune, and we'll just have to see how this affects the economy at large as really we're gonna kick the can down the road, fix it all, spend, spend, spend until there is no more hardship in the world. That is the way that we are trying to solve these problems. And so maybe we will see a sincere change of tune here, but if the economy is in just the same position that I think it will be in 2023, I highly doubt that these rate hikes will be as significant or as damaging as maybe people might think they would be. I think that we're still in the kick the can down the road generation. And what we've seen out of the rhetoric out of the Biden administration is nothing short of waving a magic wand uh, with the US dollar and trying to fix everything. So I'm not sure that these rate hikes will be all that significant, that they will offset the mountains of inflation being caused by money printing. And echoing that sentiment I had is sentiment here saying BitMEX traders are continuing to short Bitcoin in large quantities at the most bearish ratio since April 2020. Now, April 2020 was literally right after the COVID crash and possibly one of the most bearish times in the history of crypto. Now, of course, for those counter trading that trend, they made astronomical gains starting from that dip in 2020. That was really the most advantageous time to buy crypto probably in history, aside from 2017, in the amount of gains you would get in short order. Now, sentiment is saying this is a great sign for those waiting for markets to turn upward again, prices tend to increase when crowd FUD begins to take hold. And this is exactly what we're talking about, which is the entire crypto market is just an emotional roller coaster. When things get too bullish, things correct and collapse because there's too much froth and it's too easy for those bears to exploit those bulls. When things get too bearish, it's really easy for the bulls to exploit the bears. The world of crypto revolves around a sentiment-driven cosmic balance and it needs to return to the mean. And so when things are so bearish, kind of like they are right now, it's usually a sign that there will be a return to the mean and some more bullish action to be spoken about. Again, anything could happen, but this is how I see the market as the sentiment has gone way too drastically to the negative. And that usually means that we have some upward price trajectory to offset and wipe out all of those overzealous bears. And remember when I told you that the SEC was going to be treating these Bitcoin ETF applications differently this year? under new leadership of Gary Gensler. Well, now we get that the Vanek Bitcoin ETF is being looked at very, very seriously. And to their credit, Vanek has filed this thing probably like 50 times, not an exaggeration. I think it's probably been like five times. But the reality is, is that they keep filing it and well, a Bitcoin ETF would allow for so much money on the sidelines of Bitcoin to get into the game. That would be one of the biggest and most helpful additions to the fabric of cryptocurrency, which is institutional adoption through your normal brokerage firm so that anyone could be able to get access to spot Bitcoin by just going to their normal stock trading apparatus. They won't need to know anything about Coinbase or self-custody or tokens or blockchains or anything. They can just buy it and hold it through their normal stock brokerage. This is a huge 
step forward. Again, you heard all kinds of investors from Mr. Wonderful to Mark Cuban and everyone talking about the merits of an ETF. And it's very likely that a Bitcoin ETF would bring some huge upward price trajectory to Bitcoin. And with that upward price trajectory would probably get other people off the sidelines to FOMO in in an assets in a way that they could just easily deploy significant amounts of capital. So this is a huge, huge step forward. And I believe that we will see an ETF come to fruition this year. That is an incredibly big bullish green flag for Bitcoin. Now, in case you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I'm really not so good at this investing thing. I always end up in the wrong coins. And when I take exotic, extravagant risks, I end up getting rug pulled. Well, you're not alone because the reality is that Iron Finance's Titan token went completely almost to zero from cascading panic selling. And somebody else got roped into this, namely Mr. Mark Cuban. And this particular chart uh, with a rocket downwards, as you can see, this is a an ugly, ugly rug pull chart. This chart is being called the Cuban Missile crisis here. And if we go and we look at Mark Cuban's uh, tweets and replies here, you can see that he replied here saying he got hit just like everyone else. Crazy part is he got out, thought they weren't increasing their TVL enough, then bam. Um, he definitely got rugged a bit here, but he's claiming he's fronting here like he got some of his money out. Maybe he did. Congrats to you, Cubes, if you did that. But it's funny because he's just sort of out here bantering about crypto, uh, just like one of the guys here on CT. It's a beautiful thing when you see people like Mark Cuban that are just following these little trends so closely. It makes you realize how far this industry has come and how this is really, really different than last time. We also had some do-gooders here finding Mark Cuban's DeFi wallet, if you care. Uh, he made this post where he talks about adding... A uh, 75k of liquidity uh, for Titan slash die on Polygon chain, and somebody found one of the first liquidity ads for $74,749, um, and that is what they're saying has to be his wallet. So this is a redditor that figured this out. If you care about following and tracking Mark Cuban's DeFi activities. Now, as the market has slowed down, the reality is that NFT news continues to come in at a feverish pace, with CNN now selling historic news moments as NFTs. Now, we all know that your parents have shown you those newspapers, those moments in history, the moon landing, other types of huge earth-shifting moments in human history, and well, those news moments are now going to be immortalized as NFTs that you could own. Now, this might not appeal to you, but to others, I could see this appealing to them tremendously to have some kind of real authenticated ownership over a publication of historic value. Again, we're just seeing things that can't really be encapsulated in the physical form. How do you own a news publication from CNN if it's not a digitally authenticated one of one? You know, there's not really a vehicle for this. So this is a really interesting concept. Again, I'm not saying this is the holy grail of NFTs, but you need to watch the NFT space because I've said this time and time again, that NFT are the most commercial and widely adoptable version of cryptocurrency and that they will most likely start to invade and infect all kinds of commercial use cases. So be on the lookout. This NFT thing is not going away. And I do believe that based on all of the news I'm seeing, it is one of the most interesting things about cryptocurrency in June of 2021. And in fact, the news coming in from the NFT sector is, I dare say, more interesting and coming in at a higher clip than any other sector of crypto right now. And speaking of NFT news, Super Farm is teaming up with Injective, as mentioned a few weeks ago, to do an NFT drop as well as NFT farms. Again, as always, NFTs with utility is a key focus of Super Farm's ecosystem. And bringing NFTs with utility to Injective is what this is all about. These, if I dare say, absolutely sick NFTs are actually packed with utility, allowing for their holders to get access to surprise airdrops and unique utilities on the injective network. So these NFTs will actually be useful. It's a really awesome collaboration between Superfarm and Injective, and the NFT drop goes live tomorrow. So if you wanna know all about it, make sure you're following the Superfarm Twitter as we will have all the details there. Half the NFTs will be sold as a drop and half the NFTs will will be farmable with the injective INJ token. This is a fantastic partnership that really highlights Superfarm's infrastructure as an NFT launchpad, as well as an NFT farming ecosystem. So huge shout out to Injective, one of my favorite projects in this space. This is a really cool partnership. And if you guys are interested in snagging some of these super limited edition NFTs, you're definitely gonna wanna be watching the socials and showing up early tomorrow to get your hands on them. 
And finally, I wanted to cover a project called D-Travel. Uh, this is a new project from Travala. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Travala, essentially they are the gold standard of crypto travel sites. If you ever wanna spend your crypto and actually just convert it straight into a unique travel experience, this is like Expedia, but they accept like every single crypto. They're launching an Airbnb competitor. Now I've actually been behind the scenes helping Juan and the team at Travala uh, get things ready for this D-Travel launch. I'm really excited for this new project because Airbnb in theory should be a DAO owned by the actual renters, the actual hosts of the ecosystem, not run by this central entity that at many times has different values, different goals than the actual hosts. And so I think that it's a really interesting model to have the hosts own the DAO that uh, controls the network. It's a very, very compelling concept, uh, possibly even more compelling than Travala, to be honest. Not to take anything away, because they've done an amazing job with Travala. Um, it pretty much works as well as Expedia. You have any kind of option, and you can pay with literally like 40 different cryptocurrencies. So these guys hustled through the entire bear market. They launched Travala in like mid-2018. There was no bullish sentiment there, um, and they've really put in the time. And they've shown that they deliver when they set out to do something, and and setting up a travel network is something that they've proven that they can do. They've also hired some ex-Airbnb leadership here, so they're attracting some great talent and it's a really interesting project to keep on your radar, um, especially if you're looking to do some travel now that the COVID restrictions are easing up a bit. Check out Travala and definitely check out D-Travel, their new project, Airbnb style competitor. So as Bitcoin executes what some would call a picture-perfect retest of bullish support lines, it's true that danger still still looms on the horizon, but it is also important to realize that when things look a bit dark, when things look a bit dreary, are typically entry points into Bitcoin and crypto land that are more advantageous. Now, does this mean that you're going to buy and immediately make a bunch of money and go up a ton? No. Looking back at 2015, looking back at 2019, it took a long time for those buys to end up turning profitable, but of course, when they did, they were astronomical gains. So you have to understand that it's always a balance of risk and reward reward and crypto is typically the best risk reward setup when most people are really bearish. That's why this current sentiment being extremely negative is actually quite an interesting setup for crypto and typically yields good results. Again, like I've said many times, anything could happen. You need to do your own research and manage your own risk. Never just take my opinion on anything, but I'm viewing this particular risk reward setup right now. As long as we stay above that 37.5 range, it looks like the bulls are still still in control and that we could start grinding our way up higher or at least avoiding any kind of cataclysmic drop lower. And for that reason, I do remain optimistic about crypto. I remain optimistic about DeFi and I remain extremely optimistic about NFTs, which continue to seep their way into modern mainstream culture. If you guys got some value out of this episode, if you enjoyed it, make sure you give me a thumbs up. It's a free and easy way to support the channel. Turn that little thumb blue. It's good for you. If you guys want more content like this, make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification on. As always, my name's Elio Trades. Make sure you comment so you could potentially win that Ledger Nano S. As always, I thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. The link for that is in the description, and I will see you very soon on the next episode.